growing American concerns about the threat posed by China. It's a new breed of super fast missile. The hypersonic missile. Hypersonic missile. Hypersonic weapons. The Beijing has launched the weapon this summer, sending it into space and around the planet. You're behind the Chinese, you're behind the Russians. There's a lot more work to do on hypersonic. How will you track it and secure it? Right. After six decades, eight billion dollars investments, million dollar destroyers. U.S. hypersonic missile that can destroy China in 30 seconds. The U.S. and China are in a tug-of-war, the most expensive tug-of-war in history. The two nations have the largest economies in the world, with a combined GDP of about $37 trillion. Alone, they account for 43% of the world's economy. With enough funding to spare, both countries have invested huge sums into advanced technologies, including groundbreaking aircraft carriers and hypersonic missiles. Today, 25% of all aircraft carriers in the world belong to the United States, and the combined total of their deck space is more than double that of all other nations combined. The lead ship of the USA's carrier fleet, the USS Gerald Ford, is a $13 billion supercarrier armed with enough weapons to level a city. On the seas, it is protected by an armada of cruisers, destroyers, frigates, and submarines. The supercarrier is considered by many to be the single most decisive military vehicle in the world. But China could, in theory, destroy it in a single strike using its hypersonic missiles. These hypersonic missiles are now commonly at the center of discussions regarding China's military might. Invincible and impossible to intercept by traditional defense systems, China's hypersonic missiles have become something of a challenge to overcome. The U.S., too, has been working for hypersonic technology for the past few decades, since the 1960s, years before China became a world power. This makes it a wonder that, despite America's significant head start, China has managed to catch up and surpass the country in terms of hypersonic missiles. However, over half a terabyte of sensitive information was, years ago, stolen electronically from the computer systems of one of the U.S. Navy's contractors. These have led to discussions that China could have done some spying on the U.S. to gather hypersonic intelligence and then use that to build its hypersonic weapons. The U.S. is also making strides in hypersonic missile development, though, and making huge investments, too. The Department of Defense has spent more than $8 billion since 2019 on programs to develop hypersonic missiles. And in its latest five-year budget plan, the Department of Defense is requesting $13 billion over the 2023 to 2027 period for developing hypersonic missiles. Simply put, the U.S. is working tirelessly to protect its aircraft carriers by fielding hypersonic missiles on water. Hypersonic Missiles on Water Modern hypersonic missiles are the kryptonite of American air defense systems. Even with an 1,150-mile heads-up to prepare for a hit, the carrier strike group these systems protect could still get destroyed. Hypersonic missiles are missiles that can cover at least one mile per second. That is, they travel at Mach 5 speeds or faster. They also remain maneuverable throughout their flight path. Remaining maneuverable makes the missiles unpredictable, and therefore, air defenses cannot easily calculate interception points. Maneuverability is the single largest difference between traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles and modern hypersonic missiles. Intercontinental ballistic missiles can also travel at hypersonic speeds, some up to Mach 20, but they cannot maneuver and are therefore predictable and relatively easy to intercept. Modern hypersonic missiles fly higher than subsonic missiles, but lower than intercontinental ballistic missiles. Therefore, they also come with a plus of operating in an unexplored sort of in-between altitude that is difficult to defend against because there's been no need to defend the area. So, although the American supercarriers and other naval vessels are armed with advanced defense systems such as the Aegis, they remain vulnerable to hypersonic missiles that fly at unexplored altitudes, unpredictable paths, and untrue trackable speeds. While these capabilities could work in China's favor, the Asian country might also be wary of it. The United States Navy is working on similar sea-operating hypersonic missiles, 
a notable one of which is the halo. The halo. Halo, meaning hypersonic air-launched offensive, is an air-launched, air-breathing hypersonic missile with one mission, to sink ships. Halo is being developed by the U.S. Navy to address increasingly advanced naval threats of near-peer adversaries. On March 27, 2023, the Navy awarded two separate contracts with a combined value of $116 million to defense giants Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. The two companies will now build prototypes to compete to become the operational Halo missile. The companies are also heavily involved in DARPA's attempt at a hypersonic weapon, known as the Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept Program. There have always been discussions on some interoperation between the hypersonic missile attempts of the separate defense services as they're all having a go at it, including the Army and Air Force. For every major service of the U.S. military, hypersonic missiles have become a primary focus, up to the point where each service is working on multiple hypersonic missile programs at a time. For the Navy, in addition to the HALO missile, the service is also developing a hypersonic glide vehicle weapon called the Conventional Prompt Strike. The resulting missiles from this program will be deployed in the vertical launch cells of Virginia-class submarines and Zumwalt-class stealth destroyers. Similarly to the HALO missile program, this weapon, too, has the imprint of Lockheed Martin on it. Although in the case of the conventional prompt strike, Lockheed Martin has already landed and cemented a contract worth up to $2 billion to develop the weapon. While with the HALO, the company still has to battle it out against Raytheon Technologies. The competing initial design prototypes from Lockheed Martin and Raytheon for the Navy's HALO are due in late 2024. A winning design will be chosen from both options and then further developed into service. The developed missile is expected to be a lower flying conventional cruise missile that uses ramjet or scramjet propulsion. Such engines are extremely efficient at sustaining high speeds because they use onrushing supersonic airflow for compression instead of a compressor. However, they usually require separate boosters to accelerate them to high speeds in the first place. The HALO missile will be wielded by the Navy's most capable carrier-based fighter jets, including the FA-18EF Super Hornet, the F-35 Lightning II, and future successors. It is expected to enter service around 2028, which can be considered quick for a program that actively began only recently. But the U.S. needs the HALO's capabilities as soon as now. So, the service is working on an interim upgrade in the in-service long-range anti-ship missile, LRASM for short. Although the HALO missile will fly significantly faster, the LRASM air-launched missile has a high subsonic speed, which is the closest thing to hypersonic that's not hypersonic. Designed by DARPA and manufactured by Lockheed Martin, the $3 million LRASM air-launched missile is a 2,500-pound missile that wields a half-ton warhead and delivers it to targets up to 230 miles away. Like the HALO missile, it can also be launched by the Navy's FA-18EF Super Hornet and F-35 Lightning II. With useful capabilities and similarities to the HALO missile, the LRASM would suffice as a medium-term substitute to checkmate the hypersonic missile of the Chinese Navy. Hypersonic Missile of the Chinese Navy The People's Liberation Army Navy of China has developed a hypersonic missile that rivals the American HALO. It is the YJ-21. It is ahead of its American counterpart. By 2022, the missile was already in the testing phase. In a footage from 2022, the YJ-21 could be seen cold-launched from the Type 055's vertical launch system. The missile initially hopped out, powered by gas, before its thrusters took over. This way, the back blast of the thrusters does not scorch its highly capable launch ship. The $900 million Type 055 Renhai-class guided missile cruiser is undoubtedly China's most impressive surface ship after the aircraft carriers. While the performance specifications of the YJ-21 missile aren't exactly public information yet, its range is believed to be around 930 miles and its top speed between Mach 6 and Mach 10. Its launch vehicles would include the Type 055 destroyer and other compatible Chinese vessels, such as the recently launched Type 003 Fujian aircraft carrier. The missile's rather small control surfaces suggest it'll likely not double as an anti-air missile, but be used primarily to neutralize opposition ships. At its current pace of development, the YJ-21 could be the world's first ship-based hypersonic anti-ship missile. 
Like the US, China too is working on multiple hypersonic weapons programs across multiple military services. Missiles such as the DF-17, which can strike targets up to 1,600 miles away, and the Xing Kong-2 Wave Rider, which can strike targets from 6,200 miles, are also being developed. The hypersonic missile race between the United States and China is one of the most fascinating and consequential competitions in history. Reaching new heights and breaking new grounds with each test, these two nations continue to push the limits of what is possible with hypersonic technology. They also continue to show how decisive hypersonic missiles would be if you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do that now. Thanks for watching.